This invisible enemy has changed our lives completely. Tonight, Martin King retraces the 100 days of the COVID-19 pandemic. And there'll be a lot of death, unfortunately. It is the biggest thing we have seen in a lifetime. If that continues, then people will die. Never before have we locked people up in their homes for a number of months. We've never seen it before. It's the great leveller and nobody is immune. Effectively, the whole world is shut down. We know that eventually we'll get through this. We always do. But until then, we must survive a very different world. Locked in our homes, losing our businesses, losing our jobs, cut off from the people we love. And for so many people, me included with my heart condition, the constant worry about catching coronavirus. Tonight, let's look back at the 100 days that have changed our world. For us here in Australia, it all began with a relatively obscure story in the Australian newspaper on January the 8th. Page seven, down the bottom of the page, about Hong Kong fretting about an illness from Wuhan in central China. So what were we reading back then? Well, bushfire crisis, Harvey Weinstein back in court, and a story about James Packer. Oh, how times have changed. It'll be at least a year before we see things settling back to the new normality. We won't go back to how we were before. We will never go back there. David Chalk is a social analyst. He studies attitudes and behaviours. At the moment, people are in shock, disbelief, anger. Some people are pretending, oh, it's not really happening. Do you remember where you were on New Year's Eve? The date is pertinent because it was December 31 when Chinese authorities first confirmed they were treating dozens of cases of an unknown pneumonia. 11 days later, they reported the first known death, a 61-year-old man, a regular customer at the Wuhan wet market. By January 20, the first confirmed cases outside mainland China. <laughs> Days later, Wuhan, a city of 11 million people, is blocked off from the world. At this point, 17 people are dead and 570 others infected. The World Health Organization declares a public health emergency of international concern. The very next day, the US restricts travel from China. By now, nearly 9,800 people have been infected worldwide. We have it so well under control. President Donald Trump assures Americans that his administration is on top of COVID-19. In fact, it was quite the opposite. But that doesn't stop the Commander-in-Chief. The risk to the American people remains very low. It's the beginning of February and the Diamond Princess cruise ship is quarantined in Japan. It was one of many cruise ships around the globe to become a giant breeding ground for coronavirus. 3,000 passengers are on board. Since then, the Ruby Princess, which docked in Sydney recently, has recorded more than 500 cases of the disease, which accounts for around 10% of all our cases here in Australia. I don't want anyone off a ship in Sydney until we have confirmed the new protocols and got their sign off. February 7, Dr Lee Wenliang, a Chinese doctor, hailed a hero for trying to raise the alarm about COVID-19, dies from the disease. Then the virus gets its official name, COVID-19, an acronym for Coronavirus Disease 2019. The next day, confirmed cases rise to 44,653. Valentine's Day. France reports the first coronavirus death in Europe, an 80-year-old Chinese tourist. Since then, more than 8,000 people have died in France. In Japan, after a two-week quarantine on the Diamond Princess, Passengers who tested negative to the virus are offloaded. A total of 621 people on board are infected. It's early days, but in Europe, the virus is spreading at rapid speed, with Italy recording a major surge in cases, from five cases overnight to 150. Officials locked down 10 towns, the first of many to come. The UK records a total of 13 cases, four of them from the Diamond Princess. The number of Chinese deaths rises to 2,188. 
Meanwhile, in the US, Donald Trump holds a press conference and calls COVID-19 a democratic hoax. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. And this is their new hoax. February 27, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison announces the country is activating the Australian Health Sector Emergency Response Plan for coronavirus. The rate of transmission of the virus outside of China is fundamentally changing the way we need to now look at how this issue is being managed here in Australia. March 1, it's a sad start. The first Australian death to COVID-19. 78-year-old James Kwan was a passenger on board the Diamond Princess. Now 10 other passengers on board have also died from the virus. By early March, the nation has reached around 60 cases of coronavirus, with a well-known Melbourne doctor struck down. Dr Chris Higgins, father of singer Missy Higgins, tested positive to COVID-19 after treating almost 70 patients. On March the 11th, in a coronavirus chain reaction, other famous faces announce they have the virus. Actor Tom Hanks and wife Rita Wilson test positive in Queensland. This causes a partial shutdown of the Nine Network's morning stable with David Campbell, Belinda Russell, Dickie Wilkins and our very own Tracy Grimshaw going into isolation due to Rita's appearance on the Today Show. All test negative except for Dickie, who's tested positive three times now. The royal family is also hit with the virus. Prince Charles testing positive. British PM Boris Johnson tested positive too. Mr Johnson was admitted last night, but his office says his condition worsened during the course of this afternoon. Back in Australia, National Cabinet meets and begins enacting restrictions. We've seen nothing like it since World War II. On March 11, the PM announces the first COVID-19 stimulus package. $17.6 billion for individuals and businesses. Then, two days later, gatherings of 500 people are banned. Later, 100 people, then 10, and now a maximum of two. Ladies and gentlemen, against all odds, the AFL Premiership season of 2020 is ready to go. On the same day, the AFL made the extraordinary decision to go ahead with round one. It didn't last the weekend. On Sunday afternoon, AFL boss Gillan McLaughlin suspended the entire season. We knew this day was coming. The NRL tried to go it alone, but followed after round two. We would not have reached this point unless the conditions had shifted so dramatically and so exponentially. March 13, the Australian Grand Prix is abandoned. Two days later, all travellers arriving in or returning to Australia must self-isolate for 14 days. Then Australia closes its borders to non-citizens, social distancing introduced to public events. Pubs, cinemas, casinos, nightclubs and churches are closed. The 2020 Olympics in Japan is postponed. March 25, PM Scott Morrison announces COVID-19 is a pandemic in Australia. They've banned sport, but we had live boxing in the toilet paper aisles of our supermarkets. Hoarders showed us the ugly side of humanity. I just want one pack. No, not one pack. Certainly the biggest thing since the Second World War. We've had minor wars since then. We've had the recession we had to have, the GFC. We've had SARS, but we've had nothing on this scale before. We face two million people unemployed. We haven't got enough ventilators. The economy's on life support and is quicker to tell you what you can do, virtually nothing, than what you can't do, which is virtually everything. Look, we all know about social distancing and most of us are doing it, but let me tell you, as a grandparent, the greatest social distance is being stuck at home and not being able to kiss or cuddle your grandkids. I've got six of the cheeky monkeys and I haven't been with them for three weeks. Can you hear me, Max? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Tyrannosaurus? The closest we can get is via social media. Poisonous at its worst, but priceless at its best. Maxie, tell me what you've been doing today. The kids can't go to the park or the beach or a cafe or swimming or a shopping centre or footy or playgrounds or calisthenics or even a friend's house. But when there's Zoom in the room, they can talk to Papa. When Papa does come and see you, what would you like to do? Jump on a trampoline. 
At least we're connected in some way, but for many Australians, disconnection from work and friends is a real issue. But one of the worst things about losing your job is not the loss of money, but it's the loss of social interaction. Infections and death tolls in Italy, Spain and the US are staggering. But here, health-wise at least, we seem to be flattening that curve our doctors refer to. Our death rate in comparison, low. Economically though, it's a whole other story. We are all going to know somebody who's lost a job or had somebody bereaved because of this disease. And it is our ability to adapt to these new circumstances that will determine who comes through it well and who doesn't. We've had the shock, now it's the unknown that's scary. Fear of the coronavirus has cooked our share markets and some economists are tipping property prices could drop up to 20%. In fact, what we're seeing is people rediscovering some of the old virtues of prudence, thrift, doing it yourself. Who then will adapt to the new normal, whatever that is? Millennials will rule. They'll ride this through with no trouble at all.